Hi everyone, this is John Schwabish. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a tile grid waffle chart map. I know that's kind of a terrible name for a visualization, but as the title suggests, it's a combination of a tile grid map and a waffle chart. If you've never seen a tile grid map, essentially what it is is taking a regular geographic map and squarifying all of the states or counties or countries and then aligning them in a grid. If you've never seen a waffle chart, essentially what a waffle chart is is stacking up small squares and putting them within each of those squares. So what we have here on the left is a tile grid waffle chart map that I saw a couple weeks ago from the one campaign that shows the percentage of the population in each of these different African countries that are using the internet. So that's the one on the left and we're going to create the one on the right in Excel. And essentially what you're going to have here is if you download the files, you have a file that all you need to do is drop in your new data and the tile grid waffle chart map will just update automatically. So to create this uh, visualization, I have three tabs I'm going to use down here at the bottom, the names tab, the data tab, and the map itself. So let's start with the names tab. So here's the names tab. You can see it vaguely resembles the shape of Africa. It actually is the shape of Africa. And I'm going to zoom in here. And what I've done is I have created a 10 by 10 grid for each of the countries in Africa. So here's Gambia, it's 10 columns over, 10 rows down, and I've just copied the name in there. This is a little bit of the tedious work. Um, and you can see I've done that for each of these countries. Here's Senegal, again, a 10 by 10 grid. And I'm also going to place in between them these uh, separator columns and separator rows that will serve as the outlines for each of the countries. Okay, so that's the names tab, pretty simple. The data tab, this is where I have my data. Here I have the country name, here I have the data. This is arranged alphabetically, it doesn't really matter, but for these purposes it's arranged alphabetically. I also have next to it the sort of the root grid, if you will. And so here's another 10 by 10 grid. You see I'm counting up from one all the way to 100. And so for each of my countries that are gonna be 10 by 10, I'm gonna refer back to this root grid and um, compare the data values to the values in the grid. That will become clearer in a second as we go to the final tab which is the map tab and here's the actual map you can see that I have uh, 10 columns for each of the countries and 10 rows and they vary in their they are all much smaller uh, to get the squares um, and that the I have some separating columns as well that I'll show you in a moment how I did that I'm gonna zoom in so you can see the map a little bit better um, let me space this out so you can see that I'm using uh, t uh, text boxes for the titles. I typically don't like to use text boxes, but in this case, I want to have this square shape for each of the countries and putting a uh, the country name in the text itself, in the, in the spreadsheet itself would have thrown that off. So what I have here are text boxes for each of these country names that I have already typed in there and aligned for you. Okay, well, how do we get the, how do we create the, the, the waffle? So what I want to use is conditional formatting and this is an approach I've used in, in lots of other tutorials if you look on my website you'll, you'll find some of these but what I'm going to do is essentially take these hundred cells in each country and I'm going to assign them either a one or a zero the zeros I'm going to uh, leave alone and the ones I'm going to color in the blue color okay so how do I get the ones and the zeros I'm going to use this very simple if statement you can see it here at the top if you've never used an if statement in Excel it's fairly simple if some condition if that thing is true put a one in the cell, if that thing is false, put a zero. Okay, so what's the thing we're evaluating? Okay, well, we're evaluating this statement. So if data in, in the data spreadsheet, in the data tab, cell E2 is less than this thing. Okay, so let's just look here. In cell E2 of the data tab, that's the top left cell of my root uh, 10 by 10 grid that I mentioned earlier. So this is that top left cell, Here's the top right cell, so we're just going to follow all the way across when we're creating the creating the grid. So you see here's data E2, and all the way over here is going to be data N2, and again all the way across here's data N2. Okay, what are we comparing it to? We're comparing it to this VLOOKUP statement. So the VLOOKUP is going to look for the name of the country. So names, the names tab, cell S3. So I go to S3, and that's going to be the top left cell in the Gambia country grid. Uh, look up that name in the data tab, cells A2 to B43. That is my data. So I'm going to look up Gambia here in this uh, VLOOKUP command. And I'm going to pull out column 2, which is going to be my data 
value. So what this says is if the cell entry in the root grid is less than or equal to the data value for that country, give it a 1. Otherwise, give it a 0. So let's do two examples here. So if I look in this cell, so if data E2, which is 91, is less than equal to that value for Gambia, then put a 1 there. Otherwise, put a 0. And you can see that 17 is not less than 91. And therefore, this thing gets a 0. If we go all the way down to the bottom, let's go down here, data cell E11, that's number one, that's the first one. If that thing is less than or equal to the data value for Gambia, then put in a one, and that's what happens. And so if so, I've done that for all of these countries, copy and pasting, and if you look at the rules tab, I have a very simple rule. If the cell value is equal to one, format it as follows. Bring this up, give me a nice blue color, add a border, a border all the way around it that's white. And then I get that. And then I use another trick that I've used uh, in the past, which is to set the numbers to missing. I go into my uh, cell formatting menu, which I can get to either by the uh, keyboard shortcut, Command-1 on a Mac, or Control-1 on a PC. Or I can right-click and go to Format Cells. And in the custom uh, tab here at the bottom of the Format Cells, I've typed in three semicolons. And that hides the numbers. They're still there, but that hides the numbers. Okay, so that's how I get these these data these these cells to highlight or these squares to highlight. And if I go back to the data tab and update this, let's just change it to 50, just to show. And then if we go back, now you can see that this fills up half of this box to get to 50. The last thing to point out is just that I have these um, smaller uh, or or thinner, I should say, columns that f and rows that form the outer grids of each of the countries. Uh, just to note that I did that instead of drawing a, a physical outline using the borders tool for each country for two reasons. One, it was uh, it's harder to control. The, you can't really control the thickness of the, of the line uh, as much as you can when you're scaling uh, the, the width of a column or row. And secondly, there was some weird outlining or overlapping behavior that was occurring with the outlines of each of the small blue cells and then the, the white dividers. You can also see I had to make a little bit of a um, little bit of a, of a change re relative to the original. And that Cape of Verde is out here to the left, and Madagascar and Mauritius are out here to the right. And if we go back, you can see that they overlap a little bit here. Um, this was a little bit harder to do for in, in Excel, and I decided not to really worry about it too much. And I just I just pushed them off here. I don't think that really makes that much of a difference. So that's the tile grid waffle chart map. In, in, uh, for the African continent. I also created, created a couple for, um, for the US. Um, I'll show you this one first. You can see here's the one for the US. It's the same situation. Each of the states uh, has the, in this case I did it with the abbreviations. Uh, the data tab has uh, the state, not the country, the state, the abbreviation, and the data values. Um, these are just made up. Um, here's that root uh, uh, grid, and it uses the same conditional formatting approach. Um, I also did a version where we use data validation so that here I can actually go in and select different variables. So the BC rate, um, the health insurance rate, the poverty rate, and I can click through and select all of these different variables. And so the way I did that one is, again, still the same names map. In the data tab, I use a slightly different approach. Here's all the data. So again, you could just drop in, if you have different data, you can just copy and paste your data right into these cells. Even if your state aren't states or countries for the African one aren't alphabetically organized, you could just drop them in and, and you'd be all set. And then in this data tab, I use a combination of a VLOOKUP and a MATCH function. Uh, by combining those with the data validation tool, um, it's really easy to create this little, uh, this little drop-down menu in Excel that allows the user to just go in and, and select so that very quickly, the way this VLOOKUP works is it looks up the name of the state. So I'm looking up this name in the blue cell within this red cell. I find the name of the state. And then I'm going to um, use the match of which, which, um, of which variable the person, the user, is looking for. And I find that one, and I attach it to that column, and I'm all set. So that when the person here is looking at, say, the poverty rate, the poverty rate updates over here, and the data looks into that cell to match the poverty rate. 
So it's, it's going back and forth and then tagging to that column. If you'd like to learn more about VLOOKUPs, if you'd like to learn more about data visualization, more about conditional formatting, please visit my website. If you have comments or questions, please do let me know on the website or on Twitter. And um, please do go and download and use these files. Thanks a lot.